Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Paper Traders, a show where two average Joes try to beat the market. I'm your host, Eric, and I'm here with Danny, and I want to remind you to like, subscribe, comment on any platform you might be catching us on, which are too far and too many to actually name. <laughs> also, don't forget that we are streaming live, so therefore we can take your questions live like we always do. With that, uh, Danny, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good, man. Uh, it's the middle of the week. It's been pretty hectic here in the office, as you know, oh, yeah. um, but it's settling down and becoming more normalized, so I'm feeling a little bit better about that. Um, and the uh, coronavirus seems to be going down in cases, so it makes me feel a little bit more safe, I guess. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's been a busy week. For those that don't know, we had our Zach's Ultimate Strategy Session, which is now available for you to view. To view that, you have to be a Zach's Ultimate member. Now, normally I would say that you could join Zach's Ultimate for a dollar, but that promotion is now over. Sad trombone. Wah, wah. Yeah, where is it? I can't even find it, but Dang there it, it is. There we go. So sad trombone. It's uh, not happening today, but uh, we do have another promotion that I can actually get to now. We'll just get this out of the way. Uh, for one dollar, you can get into Zach's.com hmm? hmm? slash promo. <laughs> okay. And uh, you can get in on the biotech revolution, as we're calling it. And it's a $1 promotion as well. You can get the biotech, uh, what's it called, article. Or, uh, sorry, my fault. It's the biotech, uh, what, Danny, help me out with the word. Report. Your report. Thank you. <laughs> I'm having a little bit of a brain fart while I'm trying to do all this. That's but, okay. Uh, it yeah. happens to the best of us. It uh, is led by our biotech guy, which is Kevin Cook, who, as you guys know, is very active and has very good information. Um, with that, though, you also get to, you know, see everything he's doing and, you know, get on top with that. Anyway, so now that we've got the plug out of the way, um, real quick here, let's say hello to Lakshmi. Lakshmi, hello. Yeah, welcome. Good you know, morning. Welcome. Or good afternoon, wherever you yeah, are. Yeah, depending where you're at. Yep, exactly. Or evening, you know. Um, <laughs> Very true. She says hi to both of us. So hello, Lakshmi, and welcome. This is the first time I think I've seen your name here, so always happy to have new, new viewers. Um, feel free to ask questions. If you have anything, uh, we can always take it. If we can't answer it ourselves, we can take it to our other editors and other you know, analysts and have them come up with an answer for you. And we'll address that in the following show. Yeah, you can think of us as your bridge to a lot of the editors and analysts here at Zach. So yes. um, we have uh, pretty good relationships with all of them. So they'd be more than happy to answer any questions that get a little bit out of our average Joe range that I would like exactly. to say. So. And uh, hello to you, Kevin Meldrum. We have another viewer that I'm not recognizing. I'm sure that our normal guys are out there. You know, Michael Peters and <laughs> I, I F you a boss, boss and <laughs> stand up. I'm sure we got some new people. We got some, you know, old people. So welcome. up. Oh, oh, there's Mike Peters. Hello. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> so now that we've got the uh, usual crew here, uh, let's kind of get into it. Um, you know, Tesla, you know, I hate Tesla. I don't want to talk Tesla, <laughs> but we kind of have to because of their huge jump. And um, I feel like just in general... Uh, the electric car industry Craze. is is just being propelled right now. Well, Everybody... and that's funny they use that word because exactly what analysts have been saying is that it's basically a cult that's raising the price of the stock. It's not anything having to do with anything fundamental for them to actually go up to where they are. So. I, I do believe in that because, you know, as people may have known that in the past episodes, I am a fan of, of Tesla. I'm kind of the opposite of, uh, of Eric, um, but... It's just one of those things where you're buying that stock for kind of like the future of what there could be, um, and not necessarily what they're doing right now. Yes, it's awesome. It's great. But the valuations that are being put out there uh, are a little insane. Um, so I do kind of understand that uh, that idea of them being like a cult stock where oh, a lot completely. of people are just jumping on that bandwagon yep. because it's awesome, it's cool, it's new. It's it's run by stuff. Elon Musk, who's such a cool guy because he smokes pot on Joe Rogan <laughs> podcasts. Yeah. So, I yeah. mean, there's a lot of things that people kind of jumped on it for maybe the wrong reasons, um, but there's still a lot of good reasons to be in this company. If um, you believe in the company, not, that is. Yeah. In my opinion, maybe just not at $1,000 right now. I th well, but today, that, currently, it's at seven eighty one fifty while we're doing yeah, this it, show. So. It came down back to normal. I think it'll I start trading sideways. Normal, but... 
Uh, well, a lot of analysts are calling for around that seven hundred dollars. Um, I think it's going to kind of bounce around sideways for maybe the next couple months or Jeez, until something Ford crazy PE comes on out. it right now is almost a hundred. Yeah, it's insane. Ninety eight point seven percent. It's Jesus. it's crazy what people are willing to pay in this uh, current market, but that's kind of the environment we're in. Um, you tend, if you want to get in stocks like that, you're going to have to pay above and beyond the normal PE that you would you would like. So, well, I mean, personally for me at this point, no matter what, I don't care if you believe in the company or not, you're not buying it at 781. I'm currently not now. Um, <clears throat> I I was an investor long ago, um, back when it was cheaper. <laughs> um, but I didn't I didn't play it out. I'm not one of the lucky ones that held on through the insane craze that we've seen over the past few months. So, if you have though, Congratulations to you. Yeah, if you've been in it and you took your, your I would have taken my profits and then I went up to a thousand, I would have been selling. I, I think a lot of people did. It. Maybe that's probably one of the reasons why it dropped down the two hundred dollars right back down to kind of I guess reality uh, at this point. I don't know. I don't Let's know. take a look at volumes. I mean, we can take a look at the volumes here on the price consensus and EPS per surprise chart, and yeah. I mean that should give us an idea whether or not there was a huge move one way or the other. People unloading, but I mean, me personally, if I would have been holding it. I would have been getting rid of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of volume there moving. Yeah. So it's a pretty good chance of people selling it out. Yeah. I mean, it, it, and even if you had a, a small position um, and you got rid of only half of it, if if everybody decided to do that at the same time, you're going to yeah, see you're gonna have a good drop. huge spikes and those large drops all at the same time. So um, in my opinion, it's probably most likely what happened. Um, people are probably still jumping into the stock. Um, I really actually, hope not. Not at 781. I really hope not. I hope at this point people are sitting back and just watching and hoping for a dip. Because if you were to buy now, I, I don't imagine that working out very well for you. And where's where's Brian Bolin when you need him? Oh, yeah, we should get him on. We're, we're okay. So that's we get him that's going to be a future episode. We're going to deep dive into Tesla to see kind of what the numbers are what and how the fundamentals out. work and everything else. Because I mean, so to are, are we kind of done talking Tesla? Are we well, over I, it? I wanted to touch on the the two subjects real quick. Um, okay, you go ahead that and surround do your, it. Do your do one your of thing. them. You're a little bit more savvy on, which is about the. Um, the Nikola. Oh, Badger we'll get to trade. that. We'll get to that. Oh, you want to get to you, you do, Yeah, you do your numbers first, and we'll oh, talk no to numbers. about that. Oh, no numbers. This is that. strictly going to be so you can cut the music on me. Oh, okay. Uh, it's no earnings, no nothing like that. It's it's about their truck that they're re releasing, their semi truck. Um, yeah. Well, I you shouldn't. Oh, God. It's a, it's a big thing for them because there's actually a lot of companies that ordered them. Uh, for example, uh, PepsiCo has a hundred of them, and they're expecting at least fifteen of them this year to be put into play. So sooner or later, they got to be short hauling Tesla that. trucks. I know that Kes uh, PepsiCo and Coca Cola do brew <laughs> brew their stuff fairly locally. They don't usually like ship it cross country. No, these so, are going to be. So they have to PepsiCo be is going to be haul. in the Frito Lay manufacturing site. Um, that's straight from their. Well, I'm um, pretty sure they own them. I think PepsiCo owns Frito Lay. I might be wrong on that, but I'm, I'm going to take a look just to double check. Yeah, I'd, I'd imagine they do if that's where they're sending it to their manufacturing site. Um, but the trucks, they cost around $150,000. They do 300 mile yeah, ranges. Um, and then they have a $180,000 truck um, that can do 600 miles, um, which. From what we just heard, I, I don't know if you want to jump into that Nicola story. Yeah, okay. Hearing the 600 miles, it sounds great, but from the tech that was just kind of thrown at us, it sounds like that might be a drop Nothing. in a bucket. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Everybody knows how I stand on Tesla. It's no, no it's not secret. your favorite company. It's no secret that I don't believe in the electric car whatsoever, just because the fact that it is just environmentally ridiculous. But there is a company out there, ironically called Nikola. Yeah, funny. And we we were talking about that before. <laughs> yeah. That ironically, it's like the same it's the same name split into two companies because yeah. Nikola Tesla was the original inventor. Wasn't he the guy of the cell or whatever they're basing all their inventions on? No, no, no. He had actually developed the DC current. Which okay, is, that's what it is. And yeah, yeah. he was up against uh, Alexander Graham Bell, or no, Thomas Edison at the same time at a convention. And Thomas Edison was base, or yeah, Thomas Edison was basically trying to prove that. Nikola Tesla's electricity was dangerous, which wasn't true. He ended up like electro, uh, electrocuting an elephant, but not using DC current, AC current, because AC current was what Edison wanted. So he kind of 
took advantage of people's ignorance on what electricity was because nobody really knew. And he ended up killing an elephant to prove that Nikola Tesla's energy was dangerous when yeah. he was actually using his own energy, which was way more dangerous. Anybody who's ever worked with the electricity knows that an AC current is way more dangerous because it can handle more amps than DC current. So if you're going to electrocute yourself, you want to get electrocuted on a DC current set, not an AC current set. Man, that was a tidbit of information. Yeah. I like that. The more I, you know. the mo Exactly, because that was above and beyond the history lesson I thought I was going to get. Right. Well, he's famous <laughs> for the Tesla coil, you know, which is this huge, towering, very safe electrical source that basically just looks like it's an electrical storm coming off it. I don't think it actually has any real functional value. It just looks cool. But um, So Nikola Tesla was the actual physical inventor, and I have two companies that have taken on <laughs> one part of the name. Nikola. You have Nikola, and then you have <laughs> Tesla. Tesla. And Tesla's public. Nikola I will say Tesla not. sounds like a cooler company name. Yeah, Nikola, Nikola just sounds like a name. Yeah. You know, where Tesla just sounds more interesting. But so ironically, this company went and and they are private, so I want to make that known right here, right now. I know they're trying to go public, but I don't, don't know when that's going to happen. I don't think they're far enough through the process yet to make that happen. But they came out yesterday with this announcement that they have the Badger coming out. Now, just like Tesla, they're the known name. for making uh, semis, essentially, for long haul. Yeah, that's kind of, I think, their core business is right. is the, the semis. They started doing the semis as their... Uh, kind of business model and then like you said to me uh, off the show was like oh why not create something more right. commercial for so they said well we've got all this r&d done for how to make a semi truck why don't we go and make a pickup truck for the average consumer so they're looking to take a dive into the consumer realm and while i'm talking about this i'm going to pull it up because it actually kind of looks cool yeah it, it actually looks appealing. looks like a normal truck it almost looks like the new raptors the ford raptors because those things look pretty excuse me but badass i don't know why i'm not a big truck guy but when i yeah, see I them got, on the road i've got one got it up here it looks pretty cool it does look like a ford yeah like, it does like look the front like a end ford. is just very aggressive the right. lights are cool it's but, got the trim i mean it's it's so a good looking car. This is why I actually will back this electric vehicle is because this electric vehicle isn't electric. The electric is literally a backup system in case you run out of hydrogen. It's actually run on a hydrogen cell. So yeah. far more advantageous in terms of the average user. This thing will do 600 miles on the hydrogen cell and then give you 300 additional miles on the electric cell, giving you a total of 900 miles. Now, anybody who's owned a pickup truck will tell you that you are never going to get 900 miles to a tank unless you got an extra tank sitting in your bed. So this thing for me is a kind of a game changer because of the fact that it's functional for just about everyone. You know, if you're a construction worker, you can take this thing to work. If you're just a you know weekend rider and you're going to take the truck off-road or you need to tow your boat, it'll work for that too. And it's functional. True. I mean, let's be honest. That cyber truck does not look like it would haul anything other than a backpack in that bed. So this thing, to me, is the real winner when it comes to which vehicle is more reasonable for the average consumer. So again, private company, it doesn't really matter what we're talking about, but if we're talking technology... I'm going to bet on the hydrogen cell. That's just personal. And just like Tesla, they're spending money to put up hydrogen fueling stations across the country. So they're more yeah, accessible. Yeah, I mean, they're going to have to. And that was one thing I was thinking about when we were talking about the Tesla, or just, I guess, the semi truck in general being electric or hydrogen. Those companies are going to have to have something set up for these semi trucks to travel, if possible, I don't know, across country without having to do these. I don't know, ridiculously long... Two-hour stops? Yeah. That's I mean, the exact that reason I don't think so the Tesla truck money. will work. Well, it costs the trucker money and the company money. The, I mean, yeah. a truckers are paid by the mile and how fast they can get there. You right. Know? It's so all to have to timing. Right. So to have to stop for three hours to fill your truck up isn't going to work. And yeah. that's where Tesla... And you kind of brought it up with the Frito-Lay Pepsi thing. Like They're going to do short-haul trucking for the most part. They're going to be able to take... you know. Pepsi products from here in Chicago out to the suburbs. They're not going to be able to haul that stuff cross country. I'd be curious because, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of companies. Um, I'll just run through them. Uh, a few of them. There's Walmart, UPS. UPS. That's actually a huge one when you. But think again, about UPS. short, short distance. Well, I mean, when you think semi UPS, they're they're at least going cross state lines. No, in my opinion, no way, because yeah. everything gets flown in or you know trained in. So after that, it's unloaded onto a semi truck and boom, yeah, I it's on, it gets I don't, I don't know taken too much. to distribution distribution centers. I, yeah, I don't know the logistics side of it, and 
specifically that's what it's called uh, doing logistics yep so um yeah i don't know kind of the ins and outs but i'd imagine there will be it with the 600 mile range again i don't know how long it's going to charge the, this thing and the kind of I'd imagine and outs. it takes as much as a uh, normal you know tesla vehicle i'm going to assume it's gonna be a couple hours for a full charge yeah we'll see i mean it, again they're having a uh, what they're calling a battery day in uh, April. So a lot of these companies and, and customers are probably going to be there. Uh, very curious to hear kind of what the update is for this uh, Tesla truck, or not truck, it's a semi truck. We'll just call it a truck. Um, because they have their truck coming out, um, which kind of alluding to it, it is not not practical in the way that this new one that we were just looking at the badger, the badger yeah. is it looks like a functional truck. Yep. I mean, trucks have been evolving over the decades to become what they are now. But it still needs um, for, to be functional for the right. most part. So for Tesla to come out and like build this thing and be like, this is what you guys need. And it's like, no, no really. not really. <laughs> not um, going to be hauling a deer out of the woods with that. Right. So I, I don't know uh, how practical that truck is versus this. I think Nikola has a little bit of that advantage. Definitely. The cool factor, though, I think Tesla still owns that. And I think it's going to be hard for that to be taken away from them. Nah, I don't think it'll be that hard. The minute that truck fails, that cool factor is going to that that if it fails, that I mean, shine will come people off. People said the same thing about the Tesla car, and he's just ah, gone the cars on look like a car prove. though. This thing looks like something out of an old eighties. Yeah, movie. like we said, we've seen it in uh, like seen Total Recall, Total man. Recall, yeah, twenty years ago. So it's not anything new. So in terms of functionality, I think this is going to be the the real winner, especially if they get to go public. If they get to go public and start to get more money, just like Tesla did, then it's going to definitely change change that space i mean the hydrogen vehicle also is nothing new but uh it's not very popular i think the only hydrogen vehicles you really find here in the states are literally out in california because there's only a few hydrogen stations and i want to say it's toyota i could be wrong no I, I think it actually is honda that has the hydrogen hydrogen cell vehicles out there so it, it's a up-and-coming technology which i feel is far more reasonable than just an electrical fuel cell vehicle so something ex exciting to kind of keep an eye on right um, and as not this electric vehicle thing kind of takes off there's definitely going to be competition with other platforms that want to you know oh for sure so i mean how many different car manufacturers can you name right off the top of your head now uh I don't know. Let's just go. Um, yeah, but <laughs> I don't want to go very through. Yeah, very, very easily. I'd say it can 10. Give me five, right? You know? Yeah, I'd say 10 at least. So that being the case, I mean, th there's space there to be opened up, but we'll get further into that in the battleground because I got something for everybody. Ooh. Um, switching gears here. Let's get back to who we got here. Um, we got s something for you, Lakshmi, but uh, hello and morning to you, Brittany Benny. Oh, I'm going to slaughter this one. Bezine? We'll just call her Brittany B. Yeah, Brittany B. I think it's Bezine, but... Uh, I could be wrong, Ooh, but from anyway, Alaska. from Alaska, wow. right? So, hello, I've been to Alaska. I love it. So, you are very lucky that you get to live there. Well, it's funny because I think of Alaska and I think just of like snow plains everywhere. Is it really like that, or is it? Well, I, I went up there in it winter, so snow it does. constantly, right? I was up there in the winter, so it definitely was snowy. But uh, in the summertime, it's gorgeous too. I would like to go for summer, but I'm a snowboarder, as you know. So, yeah, I'm not, not to get too off topic. It's just uh, in the office, I've had some people have done the uh, the cruises the cruises up there yeah. and everybody comes back like it's amazing and you you just think to yourself kind of like alaska it is what's the big super draw, weird but... to go there because it, <laughs> it is so different than pretty much anywhere else i've really been i mean it feels like the united states but it doesn't feel like the united states a little bit different realm the of people the... are just different there and some really delicious seafood i had the best what I had, I had halibut cheeks. Mm. Now I've never even seen halibut cheeks here, but I had them up there, and I'll tell you, man, I was ready to eat another plate at fifty dollars. I was like, man, I I need more. So anyway, good good seafood. Welcome, Brittany B. Uh, Kevin, yes, we know you're a first timer, so welcome again. Um, looking for plug. Oh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Tesla. Yep, you already commented on there, and then uh, yes, please hit the like button, everyone, because that helps everyone. Um, next topic coronavirus and this is Lakshmi Lakshmi says uh, what will happen to all these stocks hyped up due to the coronavirus I mean once I mean once issue home I don't know what that means but um, I'm gonna assume that you mean what's gonna happen with the stocks because of this and you've kind of already seen what's happening with the coronavirus and other stocks actually um, our other producer here sent us some articles this morning about what was going on with the stock market because of the coronavirus and some of them are literally just talking about how companies that do business in China are going to have to start having like emergency preparedness packages ready to make sure that they can continue production to make sure there's no 
delay and what they're producing. And uh, that's due to the fact that the government's response to the coronavirus wasn't very quick or swift and kind of controlled. I don't know if you've heard, but they're literally locking people in their homes to make sure they don't go outside. So, Yeah, no, it was a serious issue. I mean, they were kind of the ground zero. They had, <clears throat> I believe, tens of thousands of people, you know, being diagnosed with the cases of the coronavirus. Here across the country, even in the United States, it was tens to 20s, maybe. I think we only had 10 here, yeah. So it wasn't as... Uh, scary and in your face I'd imagine over there was a lot different a lot different of an environment when talking about it Um, I know here there's a lot of articles kind of like ah, it's not that dangerous um, x y and z but um, I I would if I was over in China and it was having those type of numbers I think I would be taking the precautions they are Um, to kind of jump into that uh, a lot of companies were being affected Lots due to these shutdowns apple uh, i know on monday i was reading an article that said they lost 27 billion dollars in market value due to the weeks that they had to shut down their iphone production which everybody knows their iphones are monumental to their top their line. earnings yep. yeah so to see that <clears throat> it was a big deal you also saw burger king close down half of all of their stores in china um, which is roughly around 1,300 locations. I want to so say I saw, saw Starbucks did the same thing as well. Yeah, so they're not the only companies um, that are doing this. Um, there's a lot of people are being affected, and it's affecting the economy kind of overall. Um, we're seeing a bounce back um, over the past couple of days due to kind of a decrease in the cases being... Um, it's increasing. The second day in a row today was, you know, there were less cases than... The day previous so the numbers are coming down good news so they've got this somewhat under control but back to your question well, what's going to happen i personally think this is just a, a little blip it's not a very big deal i guess it's affecting some companies bottom lines i don't really see it so, sh- causing a shortage or anything i don't really necessarily think that's really going to be hitting many companies very hard i think it's gonna be a small blip in the calendar really um you will see companies like you had said you know Apple lost, you said $27 billion. I mean, you're going to have losses, but I don't think it's going to be anything that's going to be anywhere long term. No, they'll bounce back and they'll probably all kind of hit on these topics in their their upcoming earnings saying, hey, this is the reason why you're seeing this decrease. We had a a hit for a few months due to a, a large outbreak, which everybody can kind of understand. It's not something that's going to affect your long-term outlook no life goes on things keep moving forward um so but it is showing a weakness in manufacturing yeah. it is showing that with everything being manufactured in one region something like this can offset a lot yeah and so I, i'm sure companies are now preparing to move ma- some manufacturing to other places just to make sure that they aren't shut down and completely out of business for you know a couple weeks And uh, I actually had read that one of the few companies that isn't really feeling any effect about this is actually Samsung. Hmm. Their mobile phones are are, uh, being manufactured in, uh, I think it was Vietnam, I had read. So they're not being impacted. Yeah, so they don't really see any real impact from this. But that doesn't really help them in the Chinese market because Samsung apparently isn't very popular there. So I'm sure it's Huawei. Yeah, true. Yeah. Which, on a side note, there's been a lot of crazy news coming out about them recently. I mean... Pretty much every country on the planet's banning their 5G Except Canada. Hardware. Was it Canada that... Oh, uh... no. Canada's really against it, too. No, England, I think, allowed for them to England? do some... Yeah, England allowed for some infrastructure yeah. to be built by them, but it couldn't be anything within, like, X amount of, like, yeah, miles they couldn't of do a any... big business or anything. Like... Yeah, they couldn't do any, like, specific government projects right. that had to be... Basically, they're being monitored very closely. Yeah, I mean, this is mostly all due to Canada finding these back doors. That's who it was. I'm sorry, that I was confusing the two stories. So yeah, yeah. Canada so is London... the one that basically found the back doors right. that was going on, and then told us the United States, and I, we said, okay, well, we're cutting a Huawei <laughs> straight out. We're not even taking a chance. I mean, hey. I and then you had that whole kidnapping of the CFO up there, and then China retaliating. So Huawei is going to be a real problem for everybody in the future, I think. But Beyond that, you know, manufacturing-wise, coronavirus, I, I don't know if that really helps you very much, Lakshmi, but I wouldn't really worry about it too much. Everything's a small blip on the map. Yeah. Uh, quickly, I didn't realize how big these these lockdowns were that you, you had mentioned. Mm-hmm. It's saying over 60 million people in China 
are on mandatory lockdown. Oh, no. It is beyond nice... mandatory lockdown. They had officials coming in and physically chaining your door shut so you couldn't leave. Yeah. I, like, I, I didn't realize the insane. number. That is insane. 60 million. And I'm sure there's more than just 60 million. Yeah, that's probably just what's reported. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of insane when you consider that. How many that... people do we have in the United States? Like 300, 300 million? I don't know. Like, <laughs> to put that in I'm perspective. I'm sure we're closer to a billion. I don't know. I I'm Honestly, just gonna Google no U.S. Idea. population here, and we got uh, three. Oh, I'm, I'm way off. Oh, I was close. 327 million people. Wow. So I'm close. Yeah. Yeah. So, so so put that into perspective. 60 million people in China are under lockdown. If, if that was happening here in the United States, oh my goodness, mass panic. Well, so, we also have a lot more freedom than they do there. <laughs> I mean, I've read that the government's also coming, and if you go and uh, basically say that anything on social media that they're not handling this properly that they'll take you and arrest you and probably beat you yeah well it's a very serious thing um it's surpassed kind of the sars outbreak um in the yep, early I 2000s did read that. so it's i mean this isn't something just to snuff at and kind of laugh but it's definitely a serious thing so china's doing as the... you laugh <laughs> no I, I, I yeah that's terrible <laughs> i don't mean in that sense that china is definitely doing the correct thing um I don't in, think in so. Locking down. No way. No I, way. I think They're literally locking you into your house. Imagine sitting in your apartment right now and some official coming and knocking on your door and be like, be hey, scary. we're going to lock you in. Yeah. Not, would, not we want you to stay in. We're locking you in. See, we're sheltered here. I uh, I would imagine we would just be told not to go outside and we wouldn't right. do it. Right. Um, that would be probably the extent of it. But yeah, they're literally going to people's doors with chains, making sure they don't leave, which is insane because actually on a side note to the story and the way that it's moving around, uh, this morning I had heard that in an apartment building that everybody was quarantined, that somebody whose pipe system was linked to another apartment ended up contracting coronavirus. Oh, so it came through the pipe, so to speak. Yeah. So, I mean, it, I don't know, man. It, it, I think that as we've talked about, it's kind of just a flu, really. It doesn't kill average person. You have to have a weakened or, you know, a problem with your immune system for it to take you out. You're usually a kid or an older, you know, an elderly person. Yeah. It, so the average person is not going to affect you. It, it Yeah. From what we read, again, from what we were reading here from, in like, the United States standpoint, um, it doesn't seem that scary. Um, but when you put those numbers into perspective over there, it might be a little bit different. Um, everybody's know, a lot closer together in that country as well. The density is a little bit different. Um, so I don't know. It's hard for me to kind of speak on that. Uh, I want to see how many people have been infect infected with the flu. At least nine, 19 million people in the U.S. have experienced <laughs> flu il illness this season. So 19 million people, Danny. That's I about. Was, I was one of those people. <laughs> literally, that's if you were probably to compare that like one to one, that's probably almost exactly the same amount of people that have the coronavirus in China. Yeah. So, so I mean, it's not media that scary. scare. Exactly. In, in a sense. Hundred percent media but, scare. Uh, still, in in the hindsight, sixty million people uh, being locked down versus is twenty million Americans. I mean, come on, man. Yeah. It's not that when you put it in perspective like that. It's not that big a deal. So. But anyway, it is a kind of a big deal, I guess, only because the fact that it's a disease that nobody really had seen before, and then it got loose. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, you got any other stories there, Danny? No, those are two big ones that we were just kind of covering, and they're they're just engulfing the. Uh, the kind of headlines now. I know the Tesla one's not as much. The Tesla and yeah, Nikola, that's died off a bit. That's kind of something that we were just more interested, interested in. in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's fascinating. The the stuff is moving so fast. So, but no, that that's pretty much it. You just want to move into. Yeah, the, let's uh, get into the battleground then. Battleground it up. We don't want to waste these people's time. All right, so I actually do have something for the battleground today, which I know is strange and rare, but um. <laughs> I am actually going to add Neo. Neo. Remember when we were talking Tesla last time? Somebody had brought Neo up, which that was is the, the other Chinese e manufacturer. Okay. And I am not normally a huge fan of China, but sales and car growth in China is insane. Like, oh, but it's a four, Eric. I know it's a four, but I'm also looking at it as it's an F for value, meaning everybody seems to think that this is at the very bottom. And if we take a look at the chart... Or it just means they're not making any money. Uh, uh, you know, I did. I will admit I didn't dip into exactly how many cars they're pumping out and everything. I just look at literally the fundamentals. I literally just check the numbers. And if the numbers look solid to me, then I'm okay with it. Yeah, because it, it looks like a fairly new 
blip on the radar here with analyst coverage. It is. And it's only it looks like it was only late 2018 where they actually went public. So that being the case, I mean, you can see they're hitting earnings. People are interested. Too. And consensus estimates are going down. But I kind of feel like that seeing as this is being billed as China's big Tesla, you know, this is China's Tesla and China wants to buy from China. They don't want to buy American cars. They'd rather buy Chinese cars. I think that this is actually a huge play against Tesla. So it's You wish only... you could buy Nikola. <laughs> I, I do. I actually do wish I could buy Nikola. When they go public, I will definitely be adding that to my portfolio, personal and in here. But that's still a little bit of ways away. But given that Neo is here and it's only $4 a share, I kind of feel like buying 100 shares wouldn't be that big a deal. No. That's... So to add this to the portfolio at 412 I'm not going to feel too bad. No, that's a good play. Um, especially since, you know, how you feel against Tesla. It's you're kind of going with what you, uh, I want to say what you know, but. I wouldn't say that this is me just going against Tesla. I mean, obviously, as you and I have said, the electric market is here. People do Yeah, it's want not going them. anywhere. Right. I mean, I don't think it's just going to straight up disappear. But I think that adding some sort of competition to that is going to be a big deal. And again, Chinese people are going to want to buy Chinese cars. You know, they're China's very self centric in terms of their, you know, attitude. So if they can buy a Chinese electric car, well, why wouldn't they do that versus buying an American car? You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Because I mean, they're already making those moves with the computers, as we saw there. They're not buying Microsoft computers anymore. Right. They they're made doing their own. Everything internally. Yep. And that's that's not just the computers, that's the graphics cards. Yep. That's the, the processing. I can't remember the everything. name of the company that just came out that literally is making basically a Windows machine, but it's all Chinese made. And yeah. it's like $150. And yeah. it's basically at the same level as like our top end computers. Yeah. So that you're we not buy far off the thousands. base. I mean, chi China definitely is wanting to become self-sustainable yep they, they i don't know why but they just don't want to deal with anybody else's stuff <laughs> which is really funny too because they're like one of the largest importers of like raw materials and uh, energy so they can't really be self-sustainable but they can definitely push people i think in a sense they want to be right like in certain areas where they can can control it right. they want to control it 100 obviously there's always going to be something out of their hands that they can't really do something about but if they can, they they will. And right. They're they're proving that yep. right now with many. Well, I mean, facets look at Huawei. Industry. Huawei is a great example of that. I mean, we had the op we meaning the United States, you know, got this option to go to China and start selling, you know, iPhones and other American products, and they just don't want them. Like literally, the Huawei phone is the biggest selling phone in China right now. It's not the iPhone, which you'd expect might be because they are the fancy version, you know, which <laughs> you know how I feel about uh, Apple now, too. But um, I feel like this Neo play is a good one. And I, can't, I think I want to say it was Mike Peters that brought it to our attention. So, Mike, if it was you, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm throwing that one in because I feel like this is a really solid play to kind of hedge against Tesla winning in China. All right. Well, I, I bid you farewell and good luck on that one. Um, oh, are you going to be adding to the portfolio? I already did. All right, cool. it's already here. Um, as for my portfolio, I'm down a little bit today, um, but everything's green, so I'm not really quite sure what's happening. Um, reload here and see if we get some new information. But uh, I mean, I'm not really looking to unload anything. Oh no, I'm I'm well up now. That can't be right. Something happened. Yeah, I don't think you put yeah. in the number of shares or, or I did. the price. Maybe. Uh, I think you're right. I think I did forget to do that while I was talking. Let me yep. adjust here. Yeah, so if if you're doing this at home, make sure you are putting in the price because it won't actually... Automatically do it. Right. That, that's a very important thing. Which is a little confusing because it will show you on the side here what the price is, but... Yeah, the current price, right? Right. So it'll so give yeah. you the price, how much it's changing that day in percentage and in dollars. So. You can see I'm down a little bit. Not quite sure what's killing me right now, but um, I'm not really worried about it. One percent, yeah, bucks. exactly. Eh, not really not... worried about it, but everything's looking good. Um, I am gonna look to try to get rid of Matrix at some point. Um, I want to say that they report next month. Let All me right, take a quick look, see on their page because it should tell us. But uh, I'm probably gonna unload that one. That was like a safe play in case something hit the fan. But uh, seeing as nothing's really hitting the fan and we're setting up for another four your four more MAGA years, uh, things could just uh, keep crawling up. Yeah, 513. So it's actually not for a little bit. It's not until May. But um, yeah, I'll probably unload this one somewhere in the near future. 
Very I'll good. probably wait for a little little raise up there, and once it gets me a couple bucks, then it'll be adios. But uh, my market value is now up, Danny. Yeah, I was going to say, you've actually yeah. beat me in market value currently with that new addition. Yeah, I'm at $2,600. Well, again, that was a fairly easy play. For $400, it's, it's worth it, All I right. think. Well, I'm willing to gamble that one. Yeah, well, I'm still being a bit passive, um, but for good reason. Um, yeah, you I'm, haven't had an ad in a while. No, and I, I think it's just because I'm having a, a good time watching my portfolio grow. Um, as I've said in multiple episodes, we've kind of gr- grinded our way back out of the red uh, slowly but surely with um, good positions. Uh, we started off in the red with Square, and we've pushed back into the green now. We're actually positive on that stock. If uh, take a look at my screen. Um, so you see here it's at $80.61 today. We had previously bought it months ago um, back in July of 2019 at $78. So we've long grinded this one. Um, we're in 2020 now, so we've we've made our way. Um, but we're also making headways with like GW Pharma, which is our uh, cannabis play. Something Which is a little amazing bit, that that popped up for whatever reason today. Yeah, I I couldn't find anything that was specifically pushing it up to its current one twenty eight twenty two. Um, I know it hit a high of I think it was like one hundred and twenty nine plus. Um, we purchased it at one thirteen uh, fifty four. It's a little bit more of a volatile stock, which is the reason I only purchased three of them. Um, it's it's something that I, I again I'm I'm not making this portfolio to be risky and. Um, kind of looking for that big play you're investing yes for you're the not long you're not day trading you're investing which is the point of our show very correct so um i guess i'm just happy with the way our portfolio is kind of looking right now and I'm, i don't want to screw it up so i, I don't know but yeah we're, we'll definitely look for something you're doing good danny you just need to need to add a little something there i i don't disagree with you um you are surpassing me in market value now so i feel like Oh, we feel a little pressure. Yeah, a little pressure. I'm feeling the kick in the butt to get get something going here. So, look well, out for it in the next week or two because I have some some eyes on some stuff. Um, I don't want to quite say yet what because you know I don't want to get people looking at something that I want to look at. <laughs> send, send it or, rushing or up. let you kind of get the heads up. <laughs> so it's more or less what I'm worried about. But <laughs> that's funny. All right. Well, with that, um, let's get to our last question here. Um, Mike Peters had asked about Plug. Now, ironically, Danny, while you were talking about your portfolio, Plug is actually a company that makes, it looked like it said home fuel cells, hydrogen fuel cells. So so they're kind of like the manufacturer for these companies making, for Nikola? Or? Well, I, it's not, from what I was reading, it looks like it's for home use. Uh, with multiple products available, the cell continue to develop fuel cell solutions to replace lead acid batteries, materials handling vehicles, industrial trucks, North Myers. Okay, so it looks like they actually kind of do it for a little bit of everything, but they're known for making this uh, proton exchange membrane or PEM for the fuel cell. So um, I don't know, Mike. I'm um, looking at it. You got an F for value, C for growth, F for momentum, and F for VGM. Let's see what they're doing in terms of. They're beating earnings. When is their next earnings? Uh, th- this next month, three five should be announcing. All right. So um, what is the price consensus on? in EPS to pro- surprise try say? What are they saying for the future? Are they seeing growth, or are they, the analysts looking at for it to take a, a nice leap? Oh, hold currently. Means- Oof. Well, it looks a lot like Neo did. Lots of downs <laughs> and that's a lots, crazy chart. Yeah, lots of misses. That's a lot of misses. That's a, um, that's a scary chart to look at. That is a scary chart. Like every single year is just showing that they're not going to be doing very well. Yeah. But they're riding the coattails of this kind of, uh, I guess, alternative uh, energy, energy thing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, kind of. I mean, it's going up for whatever reason, even though everybody else is calling for it to go down. I'd say it's because of the trend, in my opinion. But I, I don't know anything about this company. <sighs> this, is, this would be a very... I, I Tesla, you can understand, because you've got this huge charismatic guy who smokes pot on Joe Rogan, and <laughs> everybody seems to know yeah. him. <laughs> that was such a joke. Come on. Anyway, um, this, <laughs> I thought you keep going back to the whole pot because was, he didn't even Joe inhale. Rogan. He pulled a Bill Clinton. <laughs> he sat there hilarious. and puffed on the cigar, and then yeah, like what I, a waste of cannabis. Yeah. Well, beyond that, actually, the podcast was a great episode. So if you haven't watched it or, or listened to it, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, you're cross promoting for Joe Rogan now? Heck yeah, Joe Rogan, <laughs> man, he's the best. Yeah, he actually, was should. just crowned if, as the podcast king. Actually. I was gonna say, if you listen to our podcast and you don't listen to Joe Rogan's podcast, you're doing something wrong because he, he's a very... He made $50 million last year. 
Like, we didn't make $50 million. No, we didn't. But we're going to get there, though. <laughs> yeah. We're going to get there. With our paper trading portfolios. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, uh, Mike. This is where I'm taking a gamble on a company that probably will have a little bit more, I don't know, it have it would be more vi- vi- Oh God, I can't even talk today, Danny. Yeah. What's going on here? Well, if it was more in the in like in people's focus, I think it might do better. But the fact that they're such a small manufacturer and they're like kind of in the background, like you don't really hear people talking about fuel cells, bro. Well, like, yeah, dude, I mean, did you hear about that fuel cell company, bro? Nikola's Badger car was the first instance I have heard of a hydrogen celled car, personally. Um, yeah, I would definitely have a hydrogen cell car, but that's the thing, though. Like nobody's talking about who ma- you talk about the car maker. You wouldn't be talking about the company that makes well, the that, hydrogen that's cell, what I mean. so to speak. And I'm not even hearing anybody talk about the hydrogen cell car. So right, vice versa. I, I don't see which the is strange because it was actually kind of a big deal like a couple of years ago when Honda was going to release the first ones in California. I remember that oh, Susan Sarandon, I want to say, had like the <laughs> first one available. I don't know. I'm, I'm, <laughs> look that up while I'm looking here and talking about this. I'm pretty sure she bought the first Honda fuel, uh, hydrogen cell car in California. I'm almost positive. I can see her face. So for whatever reason. But um, Mike, this isn't looking too great, bud. Um, I mean, obviously they're not paying a dividend. I mean, their average volume is kind of high. Beta 1.4 earnings ESP is positive though. I mean, I don't know. I don't know, Mike. To be honest with you, this one would make me a lot more nervous unless I knew who they're distributing to. I don't see anything about Susan Sarandon buying no. a hydrogen car. No, I'll have to look it up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. I just I typed g- in Susan Sarandon buys hydrogen car. I got nothing. So I could swear it was Susan Sarandon. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, Mike, this is like, actually kind of scary to me, especially since I don't know who they distribute to. So unless you happen to know who they're selling these hydrogen fuel cells to, like if they have Honda in their back pocket, well, that's pretty huge. Yeah, I'm a big chart guy too and, and technicals. So when I see a chart like that, it terrifies me, um, and I would just run away. Yeah, I, I, mean, wouldn't, I wouldn't even give it a second look. That's just me. The but. fact that it has so many misses is really kind of what bugs me. Like I, Tesla's an, a, an extreme example where you can miss and still make money, but when you're this far in the background and you're just, I mean, how many misses do we have here just on this page? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's too 12. much red Thir- and too many earnings revisions. Thirteen quarters of you know misses for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven quarters. I mean, that's it's a half split. They're trying. They're <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're obviously making money. I mean, that stock is up, but I don't know about their long term. Their long term, just because the consensus is so far down, makes me a little nervous. So again, Mike, if I were you, I would dig deeper and uh, see who they're distributing to. If they're distributing to some major company that's really big into hydrogen cells and very prominent, then I think that it could be a good gamble. But seeing as hydrogen <laughs> cells are kind of low, low key right now, probably not the best bet. Uh, let's see what he had to say. Wow, I thought they were up and comer. Yeah, I, you, you've given us good good work before, Mike. Um, yeah, I'd say probably watch it. And Bill Gates just bought a hydrogen-powered yacht. I like Duke Energy this week. I wish I could buy a yacht. <laughs> yeah, I'd love I a care. hydrogen-powered yacht. I don't care what it's powered by. I just want a yacht. <laughs> Let's just make a yacht and make it Danny-powered. We'll just have yeah. you down there on a bike just no, turning I don't wanna, a crank. I don't want to power it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be the guy on the deck just doing nothing. <laughs> well... With that, guys, um, we're going to get out of here. Stop wasting your time because we're now just shooting the SHIT, so to speak. Yeah. Um, be sure to like, subscribe, comment if you haven't already. Leave us a you know note telling us what you want to hear us talk about next week. Uh, we might have a guest. We might not. Maybe we'll get uh, Brian Bolin in here. Um, don't forget, sax.com slash promo. We've got a deal going on for a dollar. We can get in the biotech stocks, see what's going on with that with Kevin Cook. And uh, I think I'm done, Danny. Do you think that's it? Yeah, that's I it think for that's me. it. All well, right. Peace. All right, guys. See you guys next week. Yep. Have a good one.